Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a game called Final Stardust Cosmic Nexus. It's an indie game that is currently in early access. Disclosure, I received a free review copy of this product from keymailer.co. Now, let's get on with it. I tested this game playing on my Steam Deck. Even though it doesn't have controller support yet, and it's not clear if it's going to have controller support, the game still is playable on the Steam Deck without anything too crazy. All I did was go to the settings and put Proton Experimental. In some people, some cases, may it may run even without this. And I changed the controller scheme and I put for the touchpad to be like a mouse. So it works like when you want to play a game that was made with a mouse and keyboard with a controller and the touchpads mostly because I love the touchpads on the Steam Deck. And you can just play with that because it works like you're moving your thumbstick. Let's get on to it with the game. Now let's begin. The game itself is very interesting because you get your main character and what you're trying to do here is that you're trying to fight other people. It's just how it's made in its early access. It has dialogues, it has some trivia. The person doing this has done a lot of work. Let me just justify some for his music as well, because the game has really cool music. Now, what you see here is that two, these two are minion cards. These that says level two is an evolution of some kind. It's like when you play Pokemon, you need to have the original Pokemon card and then you upgrade it to its evolution. This is like a magic card and this is usually empowerment. It gives you something to your minion. So we, what we want to throw? Probably we want to throw... Actually, we don't want to throw anything. It's fine. As you can hear the music. Pretty interesting. I'm just gonna let it go a little bit lower so I can speak and here as you can see with my hands there's no problem so far I have R2 for the right click and I go here to change the face so he attacks my monster and my monster here has specific HP and specific attack points. So when he attacks me, he doesn't lose any health. Only I use, lose health. Alright. I'm going to use a spell card to take 1000 damage. And I kill his minion. Now, the thing with this game is that you have spell card minions and evolutions, which means that if you don't have a minion on your hand, you're pretty much getting damage. The attacks used in the beta that I played mostly, because I played this game for like five hours, it, they were pretty good. But it felt like sometimes, like it felt like Yu Gi Oh! sometimes, that your end will turn and you won. So I think they're trying to do something different here. So as you can see, I, I cannot like summon this. That's it. I battled, the end of the turn. He's done attack with his magic card and now has his monster, probably mine is dead. So I've used this one to give a HP. Now he can directly attack me. Or 
Okay, I have no, I have no minion. All I can do is attack with my cards here. And I can only use one from what it seems. Oh, I have the banner here, so you cannot use as many as you want. And as you can see, I cannot call the evolution. I just need to deal with it and press the end turn. This is good because this time it's challenging. Before, when I played mostly in the beta, I won everyone effortlessly. I didn't lose once. So he definitely did upgrade the AI here. And from what I see here, uh, I may lose actually. That's pretty interesting. Let's see if I can at least... Oh no. Wait, I didn't have enough? Oh no, he keeps summoning minions. I think I'm done, guys. Oh no. Wow, alright. Um, I only have enough for this one. Magic resource. I'm probably gonna kill that minion, but it's GG. And you can surrender here from what I can see, but I wanna I want everyone the, from the viewers to have the complete experience watching this. Yeah. Enter. Okay. There are some minions that you can put inside your graveyard immediately and you get an effect. Oh, he evolved. Okay, so we can see finally evolution. He evolved his creature. He had the two cards and now I'm dead. Okay. Let's leave. I'm glad that I made the video now because on the previous build it was too easy. I'm I'm glad I'm actually glad I lost because it shows that the game has challenge now. Before, if it was the same, I would just say that you only have like specific things that you can do, and hopefully they will put multiplayer or something. Let's see what else we can do here with this with this guy. Here is the affection like persona kind of thing you have like the levels how much affection you have with the character and you can start talking to them mephisto so this guy is a protagonist maybe that's why he beat us before it was pretty easy to beat him though and as you can see now it's on early access it's still not on the final version uh, I wanted to show that there is also a roadmap really visible from the creator. Let's go on and check it out for a moment. So we'll go to the menu. Oh, we have here deck building. Okay, we have some extra options that we didn't have before. So let's see what's in the shop. Okay, so you can buy booster bucks. All right. So you get booster bucks mostly, I guess, from beating people. All right, this seemed pretty similar to, okay. All right, there we go. Let's see, coming soon. Okay, so there is not too much info here for the card. It's level one, all of the things that you got. And this is the card that I was talking about that you, if you put it immediately on your graveyard, it does increase the damage reduction by 200. If I'm looking at it right. This definitely won't be verified unless 
they uh, put some more effort into how things look but please also keep in mind that i'm like one meter away from my steam deck because i have the recording device here in front of me so that's how it is you can also do this that's pretty cool and you can craft them also that's good now let's see how do i live now okay and we're back again on the start screen let's start as you can see the message from the creator and let's check out the roadmap oh it will get us to the trello okay trello is uh, a thing that we used from for software engineers usually and game developers to, to solve what they're doing and their roadmaps like this one so you see there is a lot of work to be done and it also means that if you like this game that there's gonna be a chance for you to voice your feedback and be able to have an impact on this game if the developer thinks that it's the right thing to do. There's not much per se for settings here. There's full screen and resolution. I'm not sure if it works here like that, but it works definitely fine I haven't encountered any problem and as you can see the battery life if you want to try it on the steam deck is around five hours on the lcd model this is not the oled by the way and as you can see you can talk with them it's kind of like you are traveling around to dual people that's pretty cool and you have different elements for your deck. So like someone has fire, someone has earth, someone has water, electricity, and stuff like that. As you can see the elements from here, it's pretty understandable what you have. Ice, earth, um, fire. I'm not sure if this is sky or light and this is like void. But it's pretty interesting so far for me. The The most interesting thing for me is that the art style seems... Because this is probably done by one guy, all of this stuff. So, for me, it's very amazing that he like created all these designs. The game is ready to this degree. He has nice music. I really like the music, especially when it goes low. He... This guy knows, this guy knows that makes this game how cool it is when you are about to win, then the music changes and you start feeling it like, oh, I'm gonna go all in and you win or lose whatever. There is also the different decks that if you have available, you can change here. Now I don't have any other deck available except the starter deck. We saw the shop, so let's see what the deck building is all about. Okay, so these are my cards in the thing. What's the preview? Oh, did I Okay, hope I didn't remove it. Did I do? Okay, so I guess, okay, so you can take them and then put them back, all right? Oh, so this is like, okay, I have too many cards of this. I just want to remove this creature. I hate it. When you have the extra cards, you can just put them back in. I guess it didn't count the previous thing that I tried to do when I logged off. And I guess you can exploit it to get whichever card you want. All right, let, let me go check. Let me go check. Shop. 
Do I have 600 or 300? Okay, I have 600. So at the time, right now, you can just continue buy, exit the game if you want to abuse it. That's fine. I will report it to the bug. So probably till you see the video, maybe it's already fixed. And you can buy a whole deck, you can buy card sleeves. The guy just knows what people want. If if you played any Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon cards, is that what you want? But now I want to talk a little bit more about overall the game. It feels great, first of all, to play on the Steam Deck. Maybe I will try to play this way even on Master Duel because I know it has controller support, but sometimes this feels better in my opinion. It feels like it's a Yu-Gi-Oh game combined with a Pokemon game. And not really the Pokemon of the card game, but really like the Pokemon, the graphics and stuff, the Pokemon of the Game Boy Advance games. It feels very similar to that. The art style, I really like it. I'm not sure if he's the own artist, but I really love these designs, like all the designs that you have here. All right, let's summarize everything here. I believe that this game has a lot of potential. It feels very similar to Yu-Gi-Oh games and Pokemon games in a kind of combined manner. It doesn't try to copy them, but it feels very familiar. When you're playing, you're, feel you're having this familiar style of the presentation, of the characters. You can understand that it gets the inspiration, but it doesn't try to copy it in any specific way. Sure, some things like the mana cost feels like magic. It, it, it feels like overall that the creator of this game just loves card games. And he just thought, you know what? I could do this myself to show his own story. He wants to create his own character, his own narrative. So it doesn't try to copy anything here. Everything is his, you can understand its unique perspective around how he wants things to feel. And it feels more like a visual novel combined with a card game. It almost feels like those older Game Boy Advance Yu-Gi-Oh games in a way that you were playing, that you were having just conversations. You didn't really see much, but you saw the beautiful artwork and everything. The only unfortunate thing from my side is that controller support right now. So you have to be able to only play with the touchpads on your Steam Deck, or if you map your cursors and everything to be on your thumbsticks, but really I don't know how good that will feel because the Steam haptics here feel amazing. It's, it's an awesome thing to have, but that's why I love the Steam Deck a lot is because you have this kind of versatility. That is why I want to make this review specifically for Steam Deck. It doesn't show only just the game, but it shows also how good it works on something like the Steam Deck, that it highlights, that it just transcends of being a traditional handheld. Now, I'm not going to show footage, obviously, from ROG Ally because it doesn't have controller support. And that is the difference. You now understand that a game like this or a game like Civilization that may not have controller support, you can only do this. Overall, I'm really glad that they panned up the AI, that they have a better deck and they can use the deck better because when I originally tried the game, I was pretty disappointed on how easy it was to beat them. But now it feels like it's giving you a bump of, hey, try to understand your deck, try to understand what you're doing. Because for me, to get the mechanics, it took me around five battles before and I was winning, but I was winning in two, three rounds. So definitely there was a lot of improvement there. And from the roadmap, the developer shows that he is committed to do the work. Right now, the game is on early access and I have, as I have shown that there is a roadmap that the developer intends to. What do we also see here is 
that it's also available on Steam to buy right now. This is not a free to play game. The developer has put already a lot of work on this and it's minus 40%. It ends on the start of January on the 5th. It's 11 Australian dollars, so it's around seven, seven USD, I guess, seven to eight USD for my American friends. I think this game is pretty interesting. If any of the things that I said really th makes you think that this could be a cool game, please give it a shot. Even with right now not having controller support, I really think that this is a cool game to get for just $11. It's still just on its start phase. If you really love card games and you see the potential in this, you can just get it if you want. This was the point of the video that I wanted to make. I wanted to thank Keymailer for sending me the review code. And I will continue to do such work. I hope to get more keys in order to show you more games and specifically review them for handhelds. Because when you're buying a game and you want to just see how it works on your PC, it's pretty obvious with the specifications what kind of experience you may get. But for the Steam Deck, you always worry, is it gonna run? Is it going to run correctly? Is it going to be stuck? It's verified, but it sucks. So these are the reasons that I'm making these reviews. Because I want to get out and people have a channel to go to and be like, you know what? What is the experience to play on the Steam Deck alone? Not PC, not a transformative experience. Handheld is your only device. If you have a Steam Deck or if you have an ROG Ally, what kind of experience you are going to expect from buying the game for that device? Because I know a lot of people that have consoles get these devices too. It's probably their first PC and they're wondering how I can make it to work. How is it going to work? Is it worth it? Should I just wait for a sale? There is so many things here that people that are new to PCs and get these handhelds just don't know or don't bother to know because the information is not available. That is why I'm making this. It's my first video review. I hope it was good. Any feedback, please leave it in the comments. If you like the video, like it. If you love it, subscribe, share it with your friends. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. See ya.